So in this extra lesson, I'm going to show you how to do some things on your graphing calculator that you wish you knew months ago. So what we're going to look at is how to enter in data and how to work with data like a table in your calculator. So the key is the STAT button, which stands for statistics. And it's right next to the button you have to press to get your X variable. And when you press it, you get three menus. You get the edit, the calculate, and then the tests. So we're going to start with edit first because this is how you actually put data into the calculator. So the edit option lets you put the data in. Sort A means to sort in ascending order. Sort D means to sort in descending order. Four is obviously to clear off a list. And then five is in case someone accidentally deletes off a list and you want it to be back in standard format, you just do setup editor and it turns everything back to normal. So if we click one for edit, we see we have list one, list two, list three, and you can scooch over and you find out that there's list four, list five, and list six. So this means that you can enter in up to six different lists of data and work with them in various ways. So let's say I have some random table of data like this one up here. Um, the way the calculator is set up, list one is the default X list and list two is the default Y list. You can use whatever you want for X and Y, but these are the defaults, so it's just easier to remember first list is X, second list is Y. And so I can type in my X values, and I can type in the corresponding Y values. And you want to make sure that each list is the same size and that you've actually entered in everything correctly. Um, now, one thing that your calculator will do with this data is it'll graph it for you, so it'll graph some data points. And... The way we do that to graph is we look for the thing that says stat plot. And stat plot is actually what it says right above the y equals. And I know some of you have accidentally gone here before by pressing second y equals. And what stat plot stands for is statistical plots. And right now they're all turned off. And if you want to graph an equation, um, usually you like to have these turned off. Um, so you've never really had to deal with this. So if you press 1 and you make sure it's turned on, this tells the calculator not to look at the y equals menu to graph something. It tells it to look at the data stored in stat um, to make a certain kind of graph. And you have six options on your graphs. Um, these first two and this last one are like two variable scatter plotty line graph things. Uh, this bar graph is not really a bar graph, it's something called a histogram, which is like a bar graph but for numbers. And these two are called box and whisker plots. And it asks you what you want the X list to be and what the Y list to be, and it automatically defaults to 1 and 2. And then the mark tells you what the points are going to look like. Now I have um, scatter plot chosen because I want to see what these data points look like when graphed, but if I choose um, if I choose a different graphs, like if I chose the histogram, it's a one variable type of graph, so all this stuff down here will change now. So I want to stick with the scatter plot because I'm looking at two variable data. And I'm also going to stick with that as my um, data point, the way it's going to look. And um, I can manually change the window if I want to. I can go and type in whatever I need to for the window. But the calculator has a special feature in the zoom. So if you press zoom, there's something called zoom statistics if you scroll down. And what this does, zoom stat, is it will automatically change the window of the calculator to optimize this data here. So if I press enter, it'll graph the data for me. And so I can see what this data looks like. And I know it's not linear because it sort of uh, goes up in a curve. And that means it's either going to be exponential or quadratic. And one of the things that I can do with this is I can, if I can figure out a potential equation for this data, I can graph the equation along with the data to see how well it fits. So for example, if you're doing an experiment and you have to come up with a model or an equation to fit the data, you can graph the data on your calculator and graph your model or your equation with it to see how closely it fits. And we're going to do that, but instead of handwriting the equation, I'm going to show you another thing that your calculator does, which is called a regression. This is the thing that you really wish I taught you months ago. Because if you have a set of data and you know what family of functions the data belongs to, then you can get the calculator to write the equation for you. Okay, so here's how. It's all under the stat menu. 
And now instead of edit, I want to know calculate. And one variable statistics for calculate are things like mean, median, and range. And then this is, these are the ones I want though, right here. These things that end REG, which stand for regression. Linreg means linear regression. So if I think my data is linear, then I can run a linear regression on it and it'll write a linear equation to fit the data. Quadreg is for quadratic. Cubic red is for cubic or third degree equations. Quartric are for fourth degree. Uh, this is just a different version of linear reg. See, so notice how this one is AX plus B, which is the standard slope intercept form, and this is when I swap A and B. LN is for natural log. EXP is for exponential, and this one is for power, and this one is for logistic. Now the ones that we're going to use, because we're in Algebra 1, are going to be exponential, quadratic, and linear, and that's it. And so I'm going to go back and think about this pattern to determine which one of these equations or which one of these regressions I'm going to use. So I'm adding a 1, I'm adding a 3, and then I'm adding a 5. So I'm adding odd integers or consecutive numbers, and my second difference is plus 2, which tells me that this table is quadratic. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to run the quadratic regression on it press enter and it hasn't done anything yet because it wants me to verify a few things it wants to make sure that X is list 1 and Y is list 2 and you can ignore pretty much the rest of this um, you just have to go down to calculate and then press enter it'll think for a second and then it gives you the standard form quadratic which is Y equals AX squared plus BX plus C and it's telling me that A is 1 and C is 1 so it looks like this equation is Y equals X squared plus 1 and so if I want to verify that, I can go and type in y equals uh, x squared plus 1. I can go to the table and make sure it gives me the same table, and it does. And I can also graph it with my data to see how well it fits. And it hits all of those points, so it's an excellent fit. So now let's look at this other example. Um, it's not quadratic because uh, this thing right here kind of messes it up. So, and it's not linear. And we're in Algebra 1, so it means it has to be exponential. So I remember I go to Stat, Edit, and I want to enter in the list. The X list happens to be exactly the same. The Y values, though, have changed. And so now I want to write the equation for it, so I press, press Stat, go over to Calculate. And I think it's exponential, so I'm going to uh, press Enter a couple times and get it to calculate the equation. It gives you the equation format. It says y equals a times b to the x. It looks like it's y equals 4 times 1.5 raised to the x power. I can test this by going to y equals and writing in the equation that I think it is and going to the table and verifying I get the exact same values, and I do, and I can graph it. And it's now graphing these new data points, and it fits. I can do the same thing with linear. But I don't need as much data points as I do for linear. So if I ask you to write the equation of the line that goes through 10, 8, and 12, 9, I can actually do this. I don't have to calculate the slope and plug in a point slope or anything like that. I just have to go to stat, edit, and enter in the pieces of data I need. And if there are extra data points that I don't need, if you just press delete, it'll get rid of those extra data points. And then I need an 8 and a 9. I need to get rid of those two. And then once again, go to stat, go over to calculate. This time I'm going to do a linear regression. Press enter a couple times, and it's going to tell me my equation is y equals 1 half x plus 3. And I can verify by going to y equals and typing in that equation, and then going to the table and making sure that the 10 value is 8. And it is, and the 12 value is 9, and it is. So I have my equation in slope-intercept form. And remember, these are all under the stat. So the rule of thumb for how many data points you need for data type, you need two for linear, three for quadratic, and I'd say two or three for exponential.